This is the Shift Heads Podcast with Shane Hewitt and friends. Welcome to the Shift Heads Podcast. I'm Shane Hewitt. We are back at it with Handy Andy Barrard joining us uh, freshly back from Vegas. I guess it's been a couple weeks now, a week now, or a bit since you've been back, but you've been dealing with all kinds of things. Hello, Andy. Shane, long, it's been, it feels like it's been a while since we last talked. It does. It really hasn't. It's only been a couple of weeks, but it, it really does feel like it's been forever. So you've been busy. You were down at CES, the electronic show down in Vegas. Uh, Mike Yanni was there too. Yep. Yep. So I saw him. I saw him there. Pretty curious as to how that went, but. <laughs> uh, it went good. Mike, um, I saw him at a couple of events. Uh, he was doing some stuff for Global, I, the morning show that he's on there. Yep. And uh, I was uh, making videos from the show floor as well. But it looked like I was working harder than he was. Oh, he, probably. He seemed way more relaxed than, I, than me. You remember the story you told us where you uh, talked a guy into getting a limo ride all the time? You're the biggest deal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mike Yachty posted a video of him getting in a limo to go to the airport. Oh, me- I did see that. Yes, I saw that. You know, he's taking a, a little uh, play out of my playbook. So I think it's so. probably working. Yeah. You did a lot of stuff and you did a lot of videos and those are all available online. But the um, there was a couple of things you did that I noticed that were really cool that I wanted to ask you about. One in particular was the hologram thing. I mean, you looked really old in it. So I don't know what was happening, but did they project you into the future? What was that about? Yeah, so this was probably the most interesting thing I saw at CES in terms of like my own um, interaction with it. And so we've heard of these holograms before. You know, I think they resurrected Tupac and put him in a in a show once where Hello. he's like out there performing. So I, I've been familiar with this technology, but I never actually got a chance to try it out until I went to CES. There was this booth and what they did is they had a camera set up and against this like, uh, white wall and so they ask you to stand there make some funny move movements but then just beside it is this like big kind of cube uh like booth essentially where they have a life-size image of you in a hologram so it's exact same size as me exact same built it's essentially me inside of this box so it looks like if you if i was and i did i made a video of it it looks like i'm just filming myself but then I walk right beside it. And then you're kind of like, whoa, whoa there's That's two cool. two handy Andys. What's going on here? But what was really interesting is they were doing a partnership, this company called Proto Hologram. They were doing a partnership with AARP in the US. So they had this little algorithm where they can make me age right before your eyes. So I'm watching myself and I can see my, my hair is getting grayer. I'm getting more wrinkles on my face. It makes like, this is what Handy Andy is going to look like at 65. And so, and then they can just dial it down, make me look younger and dial it back up. So they're just changing it in real time. As I'm looking at myself in this hologram, wow. I was completely blown away, Shane. I've How never that feel, seen though? Like you see yourself get older is, I mean, did that sort of change your perspective at all? I feel like I would look at it and kind of go, oh, you know, like TikTok, you know, get on with it. And it reminds me of like a, it was back to the future where you can go like back into the past and the future. that's it, it was kind of like that kind of feeling like whoa it's like seeing your life yeah. go like a forward to before your eyes and then i was like oh that's how i'm gonna look like you know when i get older um and then they were just and it was gone and then it was normal again and it, it really plays tricks on your mind when you see that especially when it's your own face something that we've we've looked at our own faces since we've been alive and uh yeah i have to say that Technology. And so I got really into it. I was like, tell me about this. Like, what do you got? What kind of applications are you using for this? And they're already made partnerships with universities. So they have like really high profile lecturers who they'll create a lecture and then they just can play it over and over again. Or they can do this live where they say with this technology, you can take your smartphone, have a video of you, you know, in real time, kind of like Zoom except now you're projected inside of this hologram somewhere else, you know, across the world. And then people can have interactions with you. It feels like you're right there. So fitness clubs, universities, um, you know, they have a lot of different types of applications for this. And of course, entertainment as well. But uh, this uh, was pretty interesting. Uh, I have to say this hologram technology really kind of blew me away this year at CES. That's interesting. I mean, you think of public speakers, right? They get up on stage, they you know, they present to an audience and, you know, is it going to be a thing where maybe you lose some of the humanity when you, when you lose that connection? 
I saw a speaker this week where, you know, I, I can't imagine if that person were a hologram that the sense of humor would have been the same and everything else. But if someone can't make it or they're late or whatever, or it's easier or cheaper, that's kind of cool. Yeah, no. And like they had a lot of different types of applications for it. For example, Christie's, the auction house, what they're doing with this is they'll take a piece that might be in New York instead of, you know, putting it into a crate, shipping it across the world to London for an auction where people want to get up and close to it and, and look at an artifact. They can actually just put the cameras on it and you could be at an auction house, you know, in, in you know the Middle East. Look, and it feels like you're looking at the actual item. Because it, it feels like it's right there, but it's not. And then you can bid on it. And what they found is when that Christie's the auction house was using this, the bids, they got more bids and the bids went higher because people have that interaction with that artifact, even though it's somewhere else, typically in New York, but they have the cameras there and it's like zooming it out to to somewhere else. It's it's really like zoom on steroids, Shane. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. It's taking it to the next level because it's a life-size image of somebody. And you feel that you're like talking to them when you're standing in front of that hologram. Yeah, really cool stuff. And not only that, it's also got the, um, it's, it's high resolution. It's not like the old grainy sort of holograms that used to see on Star Trek sort of idea yeah. and all that too, which is cool. All right, handyandymedia.com. If you want to go connect, don't forget to do that. And shanehewitt.ca for me. You like shiny, pretty, colorful lights and things. There's no denying that. You always get sucked yeah. into it. And I know you did. I know there was more wall tiles and all the things that you got sucked into at CES. So you have to pick a favorite. Yeah, there was this uh, company called Govi. I've never used their lights before, Shane. But I've heard of them before. They, yeah. Ryan loves them. They had, oh, yeah, no, they have like the best display. Because if you're trying to like create like a man cave or just like a really, really interesting type of space, you can do it with these lights. They got lights that you could put underneath the stairs. So as you're walking up the stairs, you have all these different color lights, but now they're programming it with AI as well. So instead of just having the standard lights, and you know, I like these lights. I've always liked that whole Knight Rider where you could have a flashing, you know, red going across. Well, they're, they're taking it to right to the next level and you could actually really program your the kind of light sensations that happen inside with the, all these different colors, or you can let the AI do it all. So if you get close to the lights, it, it recognizes and senses that you're there and then it'll start you know, having light effects. So yeah, if you're making an entertainment room, whether you're watching content, they're doing that technology where they can see what's on a screen and then mimic those lights on all the lights that are behind you. Mm -hmm. So um, I was very impressed. I tried to make contact with them because I'm like, you know, I'm a super geeky guy. Like the things that I would do with these lights uh, would probably impress them as well. So hopefully I can get some of these to, to try out at home because uh, I'm really impressed with just lighting, because we talk about this before, Shane, if you get the right lighting, that can affect your mood and how you feel, right? That's why it's so, you go to restaurants and you'll notice the ambiance. It's really all the lighting that they do that with. And so you can take that same experience now and DIY it in your home, which is something I definitely plan on doing uh, in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. And and so um, cool to do it. I mean, I love it. I've got the lights behind the TVs and all the fun things too. Yeah, can't go wrong. Okay, down at CES in Vegas, you had spoken with us after Christmas about how on your trip to get suits, the world's longest shopping trip ever, you um, you said that you that you sort of changed some of your mentality about going out, staying out late, taking care of yourself, traveling differently. So I was curious, Vegas is tempting. Yes. You uh, like you didn't uh, go and spend your days in bars when you're in Thailand. You just kind of went out and you know basically got to it. How did Vegas go? Because that was your plan was to be responsible, go about it differently. Yeah, no, I was um like typically the other freelance journalists that go there, they tend to kind of go early and then leave later than I do. But I've timed it so I come just like the day before the show starts. That evening there is an event, and then the show starts. I'm there for like two three days. And then I try to get out because I figure, you know, more than three days in Vegas, I really start to like, it takes a toll on my immune system because you're staying out late. You're surrounded by so many people. And of course it's CES. So you're going to all these events at night. This time I was pretty good. I was on my best behavior for every night, except for the last night we went to the cigar bar and they were having, it's for like a, a barbecue company, master built. And so they were having all this meat. So they got me to come out 
because they're like, oh, we got all this grill, like, you know, right, right from this new barbecue. And they were giving old fashioned cocktails. And that's my uh, favorite cocktail of all time, Shane. Mm -hmm. I started drinking old fashions like they were going out of fashion. So I did get a little bit inebriated that night. Um, but then I was flying out the next day. So you that's know, funny to me because you like you the night before you leave, that's where you punish yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because I, I had a late flight, so I knew I could stay out late. But the thing is, I don't really drink cocktails. I don't even drink hard liquor anymore. But once I start drinking them, you know, and they're so tasty and they're like, you run another one. I'm, I'll have another one. You know, I'll have another one. Next thing you know, you know, I'm pretty, pretty drunk. And then I have to get into an Uber and go back to my oh. hotel. And then I wake up in the morning. I'm like, what? You know, my, my mind's all blurry. Like what happened? You know, how many old fashions did I have? <laughs> I think yeah. I lost count after three. So maybe next year, I think it's time to just do the complete sober, boring CES. I do have the discipline. I think I'm just going to upset my friends that I go there with because they're always trying to lure me out to these different uh, parties and such. But uh, I think I'm just going to like go to sleep early, edit videos that I shoot there, maybe post it, try to get some sleep. And then if I do that, Shane, I could actually stay in Vegas a longer period of time yeah. because I'm not going to compromise my immune system if I actually do sleep in Vegas, which rarely people do. Yeah, that's uh, it's way less fun, buddy. We went out to, um, I was in Georgia and we went to, a restaurant in Alpharetta. And the one thing that's different, I think, especially in a place like that, like that's a pretty affluent place. It's yeah. pretty fancy, right? Uh, we went out, um, Mel and I, and uh, my friend, Jose, uh, my best friend, Eve's wife. And so we went to this coffee shop and it's in the middle of this sort of high-end outdoor mall is really what it is. I mean, it's a bunch of stores like we would call a strip mall, except it's like an entire block of them. And um, not high end, like mega high end, but really nice stuff. And so we're going to get a coffee. And of course, I'm not paying attention. And plus US dollar. And this, so the way they do it there is that the road goes one way in front of the shops and this way, and there's sort of a median in the middle. Yeah. And in the median in the middle is where all the restaurants are. So the restaurants aren't next to the stores. They're in the middle of the street. Anyway. Joe says, we're going to, I want to get a coffee. Let's go get a coffee. So Mel's like, great. So I got a, a coffee. Uh, Mel got like a, like a mocha and Jose got this like Nutella liquor thing. And so Mel tried it. She wanted one. So she grabbed one too. So two liquor coffees, specialty coffees, I guess you'd call them. And then I had a, a fancy mocha because I just took Mel's. It was $45 Canadian oh for three coffees. <laughs> yeah. See, this is, this is one of the reasons why I don't drink a lot these days is I find it's really expensive, but then I'm a sucker when I go to an event and it's like free and I'm like, oh, I never get this opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I get it. Everything in Vegas I noticed was expensive. Getting a Starbucks coffee in the morning, you know, expensive. it's just like crazy. I'm we like, how do people things, afford this? Well, we talk about things being cheaper in America and, and some things are like the price of fuel was still cheaper even after converting, you know, the currency. But it, going out for dinner, I went to the Atlanta Braves pub in the airport. It's just, oh, it's, nice. yeah. it's, just, it's just a pub that's got the Atlanta Braves logo is all it is. It's nothing fancy. It was $34 for two beers, two pints, right? Like it, yeah. it, things were not cheaper. They, they were definitely not cheaper. And the watching the spending of people down there also got me because people were still spending like crazy. Yes. And, um, and there, there was one thing I was really excited to tell you about. Have you ever heard of Bucky's? Bucky's a gas station. No. Okay. Have you ever heard of loves? Now you don't drive long road trips very often. So maybe a little bit less for you, but people who drive a lot, they'll probably know loves loves is like a pretty big gas station. They'll have like 50 pumps. Like it's big. Right. Wow. So, um, <laughs> where I'm driving along and I'm, I went back and forth between Alabama and Georgia a couple of times. And there's this gas station called Bucky's. And I want you to imagine in your mind, Bass Pro Shop meets Walmart meets Circle K. It's a gas station. That's what it is. So in that, like they do, they sell sandwiches. You can get like tacos and you can get all kinds of things, but they have these really uh, sort of namesake sandwiches, Bucky sandwiches. And of course they sell Bucky's roasted nuts. So you buy Bucky's nuts and all this stuff. Bucky's a beaver, by the way. And um, they have these sandwiches. So I picked up the sandwich. It was $13.99 American 
for the sandwich. That's like 16 bucks. So you compare that, it's probably cheaper than Subway, but it's just a sandwich. It was heavy. And so I didn't really think about it. They had three sandwich choices and I had a, I got the three meat sandwich, a little bit of all three meats. They make brisket right there in the middle of the store. And every time they take brisket out of the oven, they yell something and everybody cheers. And then they kind of like meats on the table and then they all cut it up and, and then they put it in the sandwiches. Polish sausage, pulled pork and brisket. Now they don't get much more Southern than that. It was the most amazing experience. I got a Bucky's mug. I wish I had it with me. I'd show everybody. And uh, it was just the most unbelievable. I love that place. And then I counted how many gas pumps were there. If I said to you, Handy Eddie, how many gas pumps make a gas station large? Throw out a number. Maybe eight, eight to 12. Yeah. Maybe? Like Costco probably has like yeah. one, two, three, four, maybe 10, 15, something like that. Yeah. Right? 240. 240 pumps? 240 pumps. It's like a superstore. It's like as a mega. As far as you could gas. see, there was like the like a gas station shelter and pumps as far as you could see. I think it was in Calhoun, wow. Georgia. Yeah. 240 wow. pumps. It was the most amazing experience. They, this guy walks in, southern accent and all. He's like, you see the price of corn outside? Eight bucks. Like it just, you could buy a barbecue, like you're the ones you were talking about. And you could like a smoker and a barbecue, or you could buy a bag of feed corn and then you could get roasted nuts or a meat sandwich. You could buy some tacos or, and I bought a collar for the dog. Like are these for truckers or like, who's the clientele here? Just no drivers? Trucks. Like no trucks parked there. No trucks allowed to park there. All just wow, so highway trip drivers. Yep. yep. That's crazy. It's amazing. What a, what a, yeah, that's highway culture for you uh -huh. <laughs> on yeah, another it was, whole nother level. Have you ever watched the people of Walmart or seen the people of Walmart website like online? It was like that, a lot like that. But that's great. That's amazing. That what a different culture, hey? That to have like mega, I don't mega gas station. Realized um, how different. I mean, I've always known Americans and Canadians are very different, but for some reason, I was just really connected to that notion on this trip, and I just really saw it. I was like, whoa. And in ways, some ways better and in some ways worse, right? Like no yeah. judgment. So yeah, it was a good lesson. It's good to go um, and and to get out and get out of the country. And and I got my Nexus done too, which was cool. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. No, Nexus is a, it, it's one of those things where, you know, it's a hassle to get it, but once you have it, oh, it, it opens the door, especially if you travel to the U.S. a lot. Yeah, back and forth. And even in and out of Canada, save yourself a lot of lineups, which is cool too. All right, handyandymedia.com. Go check out some of his new gadgets and toys that he was talking about. Uh, Andy's Instagram would be a great thing to follow too. Uh, we will link to the YouTube down below in the description. Do us a favor, subscribe to Andy, subscribe to me because we would love to uh, see a little more often. And that helps us bring you more stuff here. Thanks so much for being here, brother. Shane. The Shift Heads Podcast.